Hello everyone, welcome to UK Automate. Today we are going to learn about page object model. What is page object model and why it is so popular and why it is so important to use in any of the automation framework. Consider any automation tool in the current world. People do follow page object model. Why it is uh, so useful and why do everyone says that uh, you need to follow the page object model. Let's uh, see that. For example, I'm opening one of the site uh, here, Amazon. Okay, let me go to home page of this Amazon. If you look at the Amazon website, it has a uh, many pages. One is home page, right? Another is uh, you can say bestseller page. And once you search for some item, say for example, uh, bean bag, right? If you search for bean bag and you'll get a list of pages this we call it as a search listing page or search results page and if you select any of the product here and it will take you to a specific product description page and once you place this particular order you will go to cart page right and once you uh, uh, buy this particular product then you will move to payment page like if you look at the entire application not only this application any application if you consider there will be n number of pages included in that n number of sections to maintain that entire application in the easiest way to automate that entire application in the easiest way page object model is very necessary that means that entire application you will split into a different different pages and you handle let's see pictorially uh, how we can do that I have created this block diagram so that it will help us to understand in a better way. Consider this is a home page and in home page we have a search bar, right? We have a search bar and we have a banner. Banner is nothing but if you just go to home page, list of these advertisements or uh, some of the promotions, right? These we call it as a banner and we have a magnifier icon. And if you start listing like that, you will get a number of things in the home page. Say for example, you can see today's deals is one of the web element and related items you have viewed. This is also one of the web element like that. You have a number of web elements and these are all the web elements and you can do a number of actions on it. In home page, what all you can do, you can search for the particular uh, item or you can scroll or you can click on this to this deal you can go to cart from home page you can check your orders you can sign in like that you have a number of option actions right if you go to this block diagram here if you see home page in home page we have web elements that is search bar banner magnifier icon this all we categorize as a web elements and what all actions you do perform on that particular web element uh, with the search bar you can search for given item you can by using a sign in button you can sign in into a application by using a go cart uh, um, cart icon you can go to particular cart items and check your items like that in particular home page any page if you consider there will be a number of web elements and there will be a list of actions which you can perform on those web elements and similarly if you consider another another page say for example product description page right let's go to a product description page in amazon i'm just searching for one of the web element i'm just searching for one of the product here Okay, I am into a particular product description page we call PDP here. Here you can do a number of actions. What are the different what are the different web elements first? If you see, there is a add to cart button, there is a buy now, there is a wish list, right? And there is uh, if you scroll down, there is a get instant recommendations. Like that, you will have a number of web elements. On each web elements, you can do a number of actions. So for example, add to cart, if you click on this particular add to cart button, your product will be added to a cart. This is one of the action. And if you click on buy now, this will be directly uh, moved to a payment page or something like that. And if you click on add to wishlist, it will be added to your wishlist. 
these are the actions and the actions can be performed on different, different web elements right now let's go back to our block diagram in product description page the same way we have done here we have a price web element we have a add to cart button we have a buy now button and on all these uh, web elements you can do a number of actions you can do add to cart you can click on add to cart button you can click on buy now you can click on add to wish list on click on each of these buttons different different actions different different workflows will be generated right so if you look at this only two pages home page and product description page and it has its own web elements and it has its own actions so it is very easy to maintain very easy to represent entire application in a page wise tomorrow if any changes happens in a particular page then you can only delete or modify only related that particular page okay this is about pages so how does our uh, test look like if you scroll down here i have created one more block diagram here on these two pages or n number of pages you can do n number of test cases so for example by using a home page we can place order this is our one of the test case placing an order from home page searching for product uh, from the home page going to pdp and then going to cart then going to payment all these pages will be connected in this particular test case all these pages will be called one by one to fulfill our test case so for example one more test case i can say return order you have already placed order and now you want to return the particular order product right that is also one test case in that particular test case list of pages will be connected and one more test case can be a replace order test case like that we can have n number of test cases and all these n number of test cases will be calling required pages okay this is all about page object model and this is widely used in automation world and you can correlate with any of the tool wherever page object model comes into picture and i hope this you have understood now let's go to our code and let's try to implement the same in our visual studio so this is my fresh project here i am going to create uh, my framework here so this is the project uh, which is empty here i am going to create a new folder here that folder is src so that i can add a number of page classes there inside src i am going to create one more a folder called pages right so i'm creating one more pages folder here inside this i'm going to add one page class as we have discussed we will have a separate pages page page class for each page right so that's why i'm creating a page class here and here i'm going to add my code as we discuss entire applications will be divided into a pages right so that's why i'm going to create a separate page here and here i'm going to add some code what is that is module dot exports so i'll tell you why i'm writing this equals to new class and i here i need to provide the name of the page that is home page right inside this i'm going to add my all the code and module dot expert means that here i am exporting the functionality of home page whatever the web elements whatever the actions which i am going to write in this particular module that is home page all will be exposed to outside of this particular class now i am going to amazon dot in so i am building my uh, page class here inside this first home page i have a search bar right here i need to inspect this particular search bar and i need to find a locator right what is the locator here it is having some locator right so i'm going to write a css locator by using this value so that i can identify my search bar web element right let me copy that value and here put it here okay it is a hash as it is a id copy this value and go to your page class here i need to create a getter element for search bar this is my search bar method here and inside this i am going to write it as return and followed by whatever the value the locator value right return dollar inside uh, 
single code I am going to put my locator whatever I have copied here okay this has become my search bar web element okay now so one web element is done now I need to again do uh, same thing for magnifier icon let me inspect this particular magnifier icon here and find the locator for this so copy this particular locator here and uh, go to your page class and here again you need to write a getter method for magnifier icon so let me write a get search bar magnifier icon this is my method name where I'll be having my locator for magnifier icon so I'm writing as return dollar inside that I'm going to write my locator okay this is uh, this is my second web element now I need to do a action on this right so what I'm going to do I'm creating a method here what is that method means async search for given keyword this is my method which will do action on these two web element above web elements and this particular method will take a input what I need to search okay. so here I am adding a uh, input as keyword that is an argument keyword is an argument which I will be sending outside of this function if I am calling this function I will be sending a keyword argument what I need to search here okay here I need to use this particular above web element that is await this means particular class so here I need to put await this dot oh yeah there is a typo here looks like there is a typo with the search bar yeah, okay here I need to change my name that is uh, instead of search test I need to make it as a search bar here there was a typo okay so search bar first I need to use here right so await this dot I need to provide my search bar web element name that is a search bar dot I need to set my values that is set value inside this set value I need to put the keyword that means that I need to enter some keyword into search bar for entering a keyword into search bar I need to use a set value okay like this bin back and after this I need to click on this magnifier icon so now I need to write an action for this clicking the magnifier icon what is my action await this dot again I need to use this search magnifier method here dot click right which I am going to do on particular home page if you observe here we have a class module dot expert exports home page inside that we have a two web elements and by using these two web elements I have written one function okay now I'm going to create a test folder here so that I'll be having test so I have created a page class now I need to create a test so here I'm going to create one folder called test inside that I'm going to write my test case so here I need to create one test case file what is that test case is so I need to place my order right I need to place order by using a home page and uh, and I need to do the other options so here I'm going to say that is e to e test and inside this I'm going to create a test called place order right so inside this I'll be using my page class and I'll be writing my test case so how do I use my page class here that is a question because it is in a different class right altogether different class here I need to refer my page class here for that what I will do is I will write it as a constant here I need to declare the instance name what is that home page equals to here I need to import that particular class here right for importing any of the class I will be using a method called require this is a built-in method which is available in the JavaScript inside require I need to specify the path of that particular 
home page so what is my path it is two dots two dots means you will be going outside of this particular current work directory dot dot then dot dot again you will be doing twice inside src inside pages and inside that you have a home page right this is a path of our home page so this is how we can import home page here after that i need to write my describe method right so describe is a kind of a suit where you can add a number of test cases here so in the describe i am providing some description here what is my description place order journey right this is my uh, journey this is my workflow it method i am writing here so what is my it method says that should be able to place order correct so this is our test case first very first test case so should be able to search product and place order right this is my test case it is a async method here and inside this i am going to use my home page constant whatever i have created right first i need to launch my browser await browser dot url here i need to provide the amazon url here okay let me copy that particular amazon url from here and uh, put it here cool next i need to do action right what is action await home page dot search for given keyword right this is a method which we have created in the home page i am calling here right if you go to home page this is a method which is available here i am calling the same method here in the test and here i need to pass the argument also what is the argument that is a product which i want to search that is a bean bag and uh, here i am using a home page this is how you will import from home page right home page you will be using in below these two steps cool this is my test case and this is how i will be using a home page and i'll be passing my keyword into this method so this is a command which we use to run any of the test cases specifically by mentioning the test case name okay let me hit enter here and see what it happens cool it started execution and first it has to launch the browser with the amazon dot in and it has to enter a keyword bean bag in the search bar and click on the magnifier icon this is the search results page it happened so quickly right so our test case got passed so this is how we will be writing a test cases by using a page object model first we will create a page and the respective page we will be using in the test case this is the very basic test case which we are adding here so let me run it again by adding a uh, some sleep here browser dot sleep so that we can see what is happening here so i am adding some weight here right browser dot pause and let me run again So it is running here again searching with the bean bag and it has to click on magnifier icon so no now we have got the list of bean bags right so this is our test case and this is how we can write a test case by using a page object model correct and this test case we are going to extend this is a very basic first step uh, which i have just shown how to use a page object model so that uh, in the next session we will be continuing on this particular topic and we will be knowing more thank you subscribe this channel for more videos